Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm here today with another math tutorial video for you guys. So today we are looking at lesson 5.6 and in lesson 5.6 we're going to be dividing decimals by decimals. In my last video for lesson 5.5 we were dividing decimals by decimals but we were doing that using models. And in this lesson we're not going to be working with models, we're going to be working with some actual steps or the actual algorithms or the actual mathematical steps you would take to actually divide a decimal by a whole number. We're also going to be relying on our knowledge of our powers of 10 so that we have some strategies in place and understand what we do with the decimal point in either our divisor or our dividend when we're asked to divide a decimal by a decimal. And we're also going to remind ourselves how do we check our answers when we're done dividing because you always want to check your answers whenever the opportunity is available to you. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of examples, go over those things with you, and then I'll be right back with my closing statements after that. So I'll see you in just a second. Okay, here we have an example where we're going to divide 72 hundredths and we're going to divide that by 8 hundredths. What you need to know when you're dividing a decimal by a decimal is that if you multiply both your dividend and your divisor by the same power of 10, you will end up with the exact same answer that you would have gotten had you decided, you know what, I'm just going to divide it as the problem is written. I'm not going to use my powers of 10 to move a decimal point. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out with my dividend what power of 10 do I need to multiply 72 hundredths by so that it can be read as 72 holes or 72.0. So over here I've already done that. I used, I always start with my zero power of 10 because that is the same as me multiplying by one. So the zero power of 10 multiplied by 72 hundredths is going to give me 72 and that is what I use as my reference number. The first power of 10 is multiplied by 72 hundredths. It's going to move that decimal point one time to the right and now 72 hundredths is read as 7 and 2 tenths. I'm going to keep going because I want it to be read as 72. My second power of 10 multiplied by 72 is going to cause my decimal point from my reference number to move to the right two times and my now my answer is going to be read as 72.0 or 72 holes which is exactly what I want it to be. Now if I multiplied my dividend by the second power of 10 that means I need to do the same thing for my divisor so that my answer or my quotient is not changed in any way or is not altered from what it would have been had I just left my division problem the way that it was without moving decimal points out of the way. So because I'm familiar with my powers of 10, I should recognize that if I'm going to multiply 8 hundredths by the second power of 10, the little cheat trick that my teacher told me is that this exponent or the second power of 10 tells you how many times to move that decimal point to the right. So up here, I'm just going to go ahead and use that trick. I'm going to take this decimal point. I'm going to move it 1, 2. That's going to go there. I already figured out using the powers of 10 that for this to happen, I multiplied by the second power of 10. So my decimal point will be placed there. So now instead of 72 hundredths divided by 8 hundredths, I can write this problem as 72 divided by 8 because this now is read as 8.0 or 8. That's a basic fact that we should know. And I know that 72 divided by 8 is 9. And since I multiplied both my dividend and divisor by the same power of 10, which was 2, I know that my answer to this problem, to the original problem, um, is going to be the same as well. Sorry, I was going to erase that, but I changed my mind. So the answer to 72 hundredths divided by 8 hundredths is in fact 9 because I made sure that I used the same powers of 10 in both my dividend and divisor when I chose to move my decimal point. So that is my first example. The second example is going to be a little bit different and we're going to talk about just moving the decimal point in actually your divisor and what that means with your dividend. So I'll be right back with that second example. Here's my second example. In this example I'm going to be taking 56 hundredths and I'm going to be dividing that by 7 tenths. Now we just did some practice to refresh our memory with how powers of 10 work and how to write those out. So in this example, I'm just going to go ahead and know that I can look at this and know that I would need to move this decimal point one time to the right or I'd have to multiply by the first power of 10 to, be, to have that be read as 7. So I'm going to go ahead and move that one time right there. 
And the rule still applies with the dividend. Whatever or however many times I move the decimal point here in my divisor, I must be sure to do the same in my dividend so that my answer or my quotient to this problem is still going to be accurate and still match the problem had I chose not to move my decimal points out of the way. So now I'm going to write my problem not as 56 hundredths divided by 7 tenths, but now my problem is going to be written as 5 and 6 tenths, because I moved that decimal point there, divided by 7. So now that it's written that way and I've moved my decimal point successfully, I'm just going to go through my division steps as I would with any normal problem. So I know if I just ignore this decimal point for right now, I know that 7 can go into 56, because I'm ignoring the decimal point, 8 times. I'm going to make sure I put the 8 in the proper place value position. 8 times 7 is 56. 56 minus 56 is 0. And so the last thing I need to do is remember, well, you did have a decimal point there, so I'm going to bring it up exactly from where it's at in the dividend, and that tells me that my answer to 56 hundredths divided by 7 tenths is actually going to be 8 tenths. Now I want to check my answer because I never want to give up the opportunity to check my answer, so I'm going to take my quotient, and I'm going to multiply that by my divisor. So I'm going to take 8 tenths. I'm going to multiply that by 7 tenths. I know how to multiply decimals because I just learned that in chapter, what was that, chapter 4? Chapter 4? Yeah, chapter 4. So I'm going to move this decimal point to the right one time to get it out of the way. I'm going to move this one to the right one time to get it out of the way. And I'm going to tell myself I moved a decimal point a total of two times. Then I'm going to multiply as if these are just whole numbers. 8 times 7, I know it's 56. I got to go back and remind myself, wait a minute, you moved a decimal point out of the way two times, so you have to come in and move in one, two to the right, place your decimal point. And I know my answer is correct because this matches my dividend, so everything is going to be just fine. So those are the two examples. The basic rule that you have to remember is however you choose to move the decimal point, and whichever number you choose to move it in, you have to do the same thing for the for the other number. So if you move the decimal one time in the dividend, you got to be sure that you moved it one time in the divisor. If you move the decimal one time in the divisor, you got to be sure that you moved it one time in the dividend. They both have to be moved the same number of times in order for this to work out correctly. And then always check your answer. So those are my two examples for this lesson. I'll be right back with your closing thoughts for the day. Okay, so those were our examples. And in those examples, you were given two strategies on how to know how to move your decimal point, where to move your decimal point, and so on. So in the first example, what we did is we used our powers of 10 to move our decimal point in our dividend. And once I figured out using my powers of 10 how many times I needed to move that decimal point so that my dividend would be read as a whole number, I had to make sure that I moved the decimal point in my divisor the exact same amount of times and then move forth with my division steps just like it was a regular division problem. In the second example, we looked at both our dividend and our divisor. And in this example, we decided, well, what do I have to do or what power of 10 am I going to multiply? my divisor by so that I can move my decimal point and have my divisor read as a whole number. And then after that, we had to do the same thing in our dividend. So in our second example, I had to multiply by the first power of 10 to move that decimal point one time to the right. And since I did that with my divisor, I did the same thing in my dividend. And then I went along with my division just like it was a normal division problem, ignoring that decimal point at first in the dividend, and at the very end, just making sure to bring it up and place it in the exact same spot that it was located in the dividend itself. So those are your two examples. That's how you're going to divide a decimal by a decimal. Remember, sometimes when you're dividing a decimal by a decimal, you will end up with just a whole number, and sometimes you'll end up with a decimal that will include a whole number and some decimal parts. So that's all I have for today. I hope as always, this video was helpful to you. If it was, give it a thumbs up, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.